Welcome to HSC Economics Made Easy. This video is the third part of a series on monetary policy. Previously, we established that the three objectives of monetary policy are price stability, full employment, and sustained and stable economic growth. We also explained how the policy is implemented and how it in turn impacts these objectives. Today, we will evaluate the effectiveness of monetary policy in achieving these objectives. We will also discuss some of the limitations of monetary policy. First, let's evaluate the effectiveness of tightening monetary policy. Tightening monetary policy is usually aimed at reducing inflation. So let's look at inflation trends. Since the inflation targeting was introduced in 1993, underlying inflation has mostly stayed within the target range of 2 to 3%. The only exception were some years during the first mining boom, where underlying inflation was above the target range. This was despite contraction of fiscal policy and tightening monetary policy, which increased the cash rate from 4.25% in 2002 to a peak of 7.25%. This demand pool inflation was driven by high demand from our trading partners for mining exports, pushing up aggregate demand. This highlights two factors that could limit the effectiveness of tightening monetary policy. Firstly, even with the support of contraction of fiscal policy, Aggregate demand was high because of global influences. Also, with Australia having access to a global financial market, Australian investors can continue to fund investment using finance from other countries with lower interest rates, despite increased cash rates in Australia. Secondly, this could be an example of impact time lag. There are two types of time lag, implementation time lag and impact time lags. With monetary policy, the implementation is quick, as cash rate targets are announced monthly and implemented overnight but impact time lags are much longer with monetary policy. This is because the components in the transmission mechanism, like consumption, investment, wealth, and net exports, take a while to react. Another limitation that could be highlighted by tightening monetary policy is that it can be described as a blunt instrument. This means that monetary policy cannot target specific states or industries. Throughout the mining boom, Australia was described as a two-speed economy as economic growth and inflation was mostly led by larger states like New South Wales, Victoria and Queensland, as well as the mining states like Western Australia and the Northern Territories. However, South Australia and Tasmania were not experiencing high growth. This highlights the problem that monetary policy is applied the same way across the country in response to inflation. So even though the latter countries were already experiencing low growth and inflation, they experienced the impacts of a contractionary monetary policy anyway. What about loosening monetary policy? Has the RBA been effective in stimulating economic growth and lowering unemployment? Annual economic growth has been positive for 30 years, and this has seen the unemployment rate stay below 7% during this time too. Based on this, it would seem that the RBA has been quite effective. However, since the slowdown of the mining boom, economic growth has been below trend. Inflation has also been below the target range of 2% since 2015 too. This could be attributed to a slowdown in export demand and foreign investment since 2013, the subsequent decreased consumer and investor confidence, as well as the coronavirus outbreak from China since the end of 2019. This indicates a lack of aggregate demand, so the RBA responded with expansionary monetary policy. The cash rate had fallen from a high of 4.25% in 2011 to an emergency cut to a low of 0.25 in March 2020. Despite these rate cuts, it appears that the RBA has not achieved its objectives. What has limited the effectiveness of loosening monetary policy during these times? While some of these factors played a role in limiting the effectiveness, aggregate demand has fallen because of a decrease in export demand and foreign investment due to China's slowdown. Also, if global interest rates have fallen along with the Australian rate, then there'll be no reaction from the international sector and the exchange rate, so net exports will not increase. Also, impact time lags can be observed with loosening monetary policy as consumers, investors and the international sector need time to react. This is related to another limitation, a liquidity trap. This is when investments don't increase even though rates have been cut to an absolute low, and this can be attributed to very low investor confidence. Lastly, one of the reasons that monetary policy has not achieved its goal to stimulate aggregate demand is that it was conflicting with fiscal policy's objectives. Since the recovery from the GFC, Tax revenue has exceeded government expenditure, as fiscal policy in Australia has been aimed at fiscal consolidation, which is to get the federal budget back to surplus. So while monetary policy has been expansionary, fiscal policy has been contractionary, slowing down aggregate demand. In conclusion, the RBA has been mostly successful when it comes to tightening monetary policy in order to lower inflation. However, there are exceptions and limitations, such as the time lags, as well as the policy being a blunt instrument.
And when it comes to loosening monetary policy, the RBA has been less successful in stimulating aggregate demand. This could be attributed to the liquidity trap as well as conflicting with fiscal policy. I hope that my explanations and examples have made it easier for you to evaluate the effectiveness of monetary policy. The next part of this series on economic policies will include fiscal policy and microeconomic reforms. Make sure you subscribe to the channel as well as follow us on Facebook to make sure you don't miss future videos. If this video has helped you, please leave a like, comment, as well as share the video. And I look forward to continuing to make HSC economics easy for you. See you next time.